Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Over on Savage Finance, I've got a response to Mr. Graham Stevens' critique video of my video ad. And I want to talk about that over here. I've been doing YouTube for about 12 years, and I have never, ever gone after another YouTuber. Uh, there are many YouTubers I've had my opinions about. Graham Stevens is one of those YouTubers I've had an opinion about for many years. And until this happened, I was never going to really, I, you know, I'm pretty much like, hey, let people make their own critiques. But one of the reasons I did the response video was Graham is a hypocrite. He went in on me for using tactics that he has used and, cur cur and currently uses. So that is one of the, that's the thing that pissed me off the most about the whole video. You know, he didn't actually make any critique on the strong points of the video. And I was just sitting there like, and you know, I actually watched it for the first time yesterday. And I have been getting messages and comments that Graham has made this video, Graham has made this video, Graham. And I'm like, I don't watch his channel, so I didn't really know where it was until Joe actually sent me the video and gave me a timestamp. So Joe, I appreciate you for that. And I sat down and I watched it. And this is the thing, like, um, this has kind of opened a new door. This has opened a new rim of me because essentially I did a kind of a, like a reaction video of this guy on millennial money. A lot of people like that and I want to do more content like this. And since Graham has taken it upon himself to react to my video, I'm going to start reacting to his videos, but I'm not going to react to his videos as a fanboy. Um, essentially, I'm going to react to his videos as a seasoned person who knows more about, uh, I, honestly, I think I know more about money than he does. Now, I know that I'm not, quote, an investor and all this other stuff, but I know my way around a dollar. And I'm going to start critiquing his videos. I'm going to start doing to him what he did to me. And let's see how that goes. Because one of the things is it was full of ad hoc attacks. It was full of garbage. It was full of, and I'm like, oh, okay. And essentially, I see why him and me, Kevin, are friends. That is very much a meet Kevin tactic. And so there's going to be a collection of videos. Let's call it the Graham Stevens Chronicles. Because, like I said, this is something I've never done before in my 12 years of YouTube. But I feel that it is warranted because in the personal finance space, there's a lot of BS advice. There's a lot of garbage. Like on Savage Finance, I have a video talking about how the, the, the lies the investing community tells. This guy put up a video, this guy with a $14,000 salary invested in UPS stock and has a seven. That, I mean, it, it was so blatantly misaligned with the truth. The $14,000 salary adjusted for inflation do be making $130,000 a year. And what he was investing in the stock is more than the average person made in 1952. Here's my thesis. The best investors are people with high incomes. You wanna know why? Because they have the income. And this is something that is not really illustrated or really um, expanded upon in the investing personal finance community. You know, I have a thesis, I have a thesis, and my thesis is that 
Number one, that most people in America need to start a small people, a small, a small business. Let's say this. Uh, most folks need to start a small business. And when I say a small business, you can start selling stuff on eBay and make this additional $375 per week, $750 every two weeks, $1,500 per month. It's not going to take you 40 hours to do this. And you can do this and you can start to change out your life. Because the first thing you need to do is establish a long-term emergency fund. And then the second thing you need to do is establish a short-term emergency fund to protect the long-term emergency fund. And then after that, you need to create a family operating account. So you're two months ahead on your bills. So you pay your bills when they come in, not when you get paid. So this is going to create uh, uh, a chain of money management that's just going to put you in the driver's seat of life. And no one on, in the personal finance community is really talking about this. Now, I will say there are people in the budgeting sector of YouTube that talk a lot about this. And, you know, cash envelopes and everything. Kudos to those guys. But here's the thing. Over half the country makes less than $33,000 a year. So half of the working public is 80 million people. And then when you move it up to 60,000, 75% of the people don't make that. So essentially, from a income standpoint, 70% of the country is not in the position to be an investor. And th this is what's funny. The 1% owns 84 percent of the stock market once again why does the one percent own 84 percent of the stock market like everyone's going on elon musk elon musk bought bitcoin how did elon musk make his money creating companies paypal tesla spacex he did not get rich from cryptocurrency cryptocurrency will never give him the wealth that was created from starting businesses. Never. And you know, people like, you know, there, there's this weird space where people look at the top 1% and they like, well, they have a lot of real estate. So they must have made their money from real estate. Well, they're in a lot of crypto, so they must have made their money from crypto. And Bezos is another big time investor. How do he make his money? Amazon. Warren Buffett, big time investor. You know, Berkshire Hathaway stock is $400,000 per share. It dipped it down to like 386 during the pandemic. <laughs> That's when you could have got you a share of war of Berkshire Hathaway on sale. You would need 10, you would need um, to buy 10, 10 shares of Berkshire Hathaway, you would need $4 million. Warren Buffett got his money from buying businesses. They own Geico and some other stuff. So essentially, I'm gonna bring a new voice, a new methodology to the personal finance investing community because I have run the numbers. Dividend stock, which is so many people are crazy about, and this whole notion of just making money while you're doing absolutely nothing is so attractive that people will go ahead and pile tons and tons of cash into dividend stock and the payout is peanuts. The payout isn't really that good. And that's one of the things that is so crazy about uh, this whole thing. So one of the things that you and I are going to explore in this money conundrum is how to, you know, because like I'm about to expand my content on Savage Finance because more people need to get the message that, hey, you know, once again, this is my thesis. 
that if you're in income danger zone number one, $50,000 a year or less, you're better off starting a small business than investing in stock or cryptocurrency. And the, uh, the math proves it. And let me give you the math. So let's go ahead and say you started an eBay business. And this is something anyone can do. It's not rocket science. You can find out how to do this for free online watching YouTube videos. So you start your eBay business, you keep your job, you're not quitting your job, and you make 1500 bucks per month profit. Profit, right? So this is above the cost of goods and running the business. This is some, I mean, my first month on eBay years and years ago, I did like 3800 bucks. So eBay isn't what it used to be, but you can still make money on eBay, Macari and everything. So let's go ahead and say your you your name is John and you you have a wife, her name is Jill, and together y'all make sixty thousand dollars a year. And John, you 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 you're you've done the typical American thing. You have a car note, you have credit card debt, and you and Jill both have student loan debt. So you're trying to invest with pennies because you have all of your money going to service debt. So if you go to your wife and say, hey, let's chill out a minute. Let's um, work on this eBay business and get rid of some of this debt. So you stop trying to be an investor because you're only investing between you and your wife, maybe two to 300 bucks per month in your 401k. You're gonna even stop that. So you're gonna spend the next two to three years, number one, getting rid of debt, and that's what this eBay business will do, will help you retire this debt. Then you're gonna create a long-term emergency fund, then you're gonna create a short-term emergency fund, and you're gonna create a family operating account. And you're gonna get out of debt. If you have cars with car payments, you're gonna sell them and get from under those car payments. And then in three years, you've got yourself situated now you're in a position to invest two to three thousand dollars per month now why is that let's just say you invest two thousand dollars per month right that's twenty four thousand dollars a year all right so you go back three years you and your wife were investing 400 bucks a month okay 400 bucks a month so that's $4,800 a year. So for the last three years, you would have had $12,000 in investments. All right, so now you're in a position to invest $2,000 per month. Your first year, you will put $24,000 away, which is $10,000 more than if you had continued to limp along, pay debt, and be a slave to debt, servicing debt, and living the American lifestyle you would be ahead in one year of investing properly because I see all this stuff. I'm like, hey man, uh, I remember seeing this Facebook post where this guy was talking about his bank account was in the negative and he was um, going to use some money in his account to buy Bitcoin even though he was in the negative. So he was in the negative, and this told me he didn't have an emergency fund, because th this is something that I, I'm really going to push hard. Before you become an investor, you need to have a, a financial safety net. You need to have your long-term emergency fund. You need to have your short-term emergency fund. You need to have your family operating account. And this information has come from me, you know, the moves that I've made in my life, and once again, even though Graham Stevens thinks that I rent my cards, I pay cash for it. And that's really controversial because people's like, I want to finance my car because I can get it financed at 3%. Here's the thing. Unless you have an excellent credit score, you're not getting financing at 3% or 0%. And most people in America do not have the credit score to get that type of financing. So that's something that should be brought up. So I'm gonna invest, I'm gonna pay this 3% and I'm gonna invest this money over here and make 4%. All right, L let's go ahead and talk about what happened to me in 2019. I had a heart attack and 
I, you know, the only thing that was stressing me out was getting better. It's like, this happened. I spent four weeks in the hospital, got out, didn't work for five months while I was recovering. I had no financial worries. I didn't have to worry about losing my house. I didn't have to worry about losing my cars. I didn't have any personal debt to service, so I didn't have to worry about paying bills. And that showed me the power of my system. You know, because I bring you personal experience. Many of you in the comments want to reply with theory. Something that you're not doing. Because essentially, most of the people, less than 1% of the world owns cryptocurrency. So all you people in this like, hey, you're wrong about Bitcoin. Am I? We will see. The year is still young. And there's plenty of time for it to crash again. But here's something. A lot of you are defending something that you're not invested in. Which is crazy to me. Once again, I don't recommend if you're in danger zone, number one, to invest in cryptocurrency. You need to be working on getting rid of debt. You need to be working on establishing a savings fund and you work. You need to be working on creating um, economic harmony in your life. Um, one of the things that I am really grateful for in my life is I have the ability like the other day lost another drone and this time it was some weird because the drone got to a certain area and it just wouldn't come back and the battery died down and it landed somewhere I don't know where and fortunately I have it insured so this is I have crashed well, lost one zone, crashed the new drone twice, and this was the replacement that I got, <laughs> and now it's off in the middle of nowhere. I don't have any clue to where it, 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 it landed. It just got somewhere, it, it, it's just weird. It's just weird, but once again, I have it insured. I'm gonna make a claim <laughs> for that drone, get the insurance money and buy another one. And just go a bit. And what's funny is the very first drone that I have, I bought in 2017, you know, it, it doesn't go as far as the new drones. The new drones will go like 8,000, 9,000 square feet. This, this thing will go 2,500, and then it's just like it's not going any further. So I don't know what happened the other day, but I tell you this story. Because this year I have spent like $5,000 on drones. And essentially this one, the first drone was a complete loss of 2,800. Well, let's say 2,500 bucks. It was a complete loss. And this one I'm going, I've had it insured. And going forward, I'm going to be insuring all of my drones. Because the next one, I'm going to have to go to Geico Insurance to get this drone insured. Because once you do a claim, State Farm isn't um, looking to pay out any more claims. They won't, they won't let you renew. But I'm going to do a lot of different financial advice. I'm going to do a lot of um, different kind of stuff going forward. So you can look for more, like, like seriously, I, I strategically, because essentially, when I watched the video, I got pissed off, okay? First thing, I got pissed off. There's some people that was like, it was harmless, it was a little lighthearted roasting. Actually, no, it wasn't. He's being 100% a hypocrite because he is roasting me on tactics that he has used and currently uses on his YouTube channel. And that right there doesn't sit right with me. I, I think it is a problem. So there will be more reviews because essentially uh, so many people are in love with this guy because I get it that he's a likable 
person, but no one has really challenged his financial advice, which I believe to be milk toast. Because essentially, I come from a different perspective. I come from a different walk of life. <clears throat> and you know what? It's time to stop being a nice guy. Because essentially, when I was being roasted with my haters back in the storage auction days, I ignored them. And man, they went crazy. And once I started responding with a lot, I actually sued someone. I actually sued someone. And once I sent that first lawsuit, the noise died down like 80% in a week. Because they were just going on. They were having these three hour hangouts. And it just got to a point where it's like, you know what, enough's enough. And this is how I kind of feel on this because like I said, one of the reasons I started Savage Finance was to give you guys accurate and helpful financial content. Like, I don't know if Graham Stevens talks about financing cars, but if you're in danger zone number one, you should not be financing a car. You should have a car that you can pay cash for because you just don't have enough money to play those games. You know, if you're in income zone number one, number two, Number two, you feel that you have money because you make more money, you feel that you can finance a car, but really you can't. And if you're in income zone number three, 150, 200,000, yes, you can finance a car because you have enough money where you can finance a car, you can make investments, and you can live your life really well. But most of America is not in income zone number three. Most of America's in income zone number one and number two, the danger zone. And it's just a bunch of misuse of money because, yeah, I got a Porsche and a BMW in the garage. Yep, I live in a million dollar house. But you know, I don't do those kind of things every day. Here's something that's gonna find to be really interesting. Because I was looking at my personal spend versus my business spend. Now my business spend is rather high. And I'm going to tell you why it's high. You know what compromises the most of my business spend? My salary. $30,000 a month. That's the biggest. Uh, my assistant makes $4,000 a month. And to run the business costs four, four, four thousand a month. So if I wasn't paying myself $30,000 a month, which, you know, it, I'm saving money because um, I'm not paying payroll taxes on the rest of that money. But um, my personal spend, which is primarily food, and I, I bought some sheets and some stuff the other day. I mean, I spend 1200 to $1,500 a month personally, mostly food and little stuff like that. And everything else is covered by the business. The house is covered by the business. The cars are covered by the business. And I, I did some math last night. So living this million dollar lifestyle is costing me 6,200 bucks per month. In comparison to what I make, they ain't a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. So I don't have a lot of bad habits. I don't spend a lot of money on garbage. Now, once I find me a young, you know, young tender, and get married and start popping out kids, that's going to probably double. And I'm gonna tell you why it's gonna double, because I'm gonna have to buy a bigger house. Well, I will buy a bigger house. I don't have to, I will. It's probably gonna be like 1.5 million, maybe $2 million house. I'm gonna to have to make sure she has a proper SUV for her and the kiddos. And it's probably gonna go up about 2,500 per month. That's what it's probably gonna go up for. So, you know, as we plan this stuff out, um, you know, there's a lot of things, in my opinion, that's wrong with the personal finance community on YouTube. And I'm about to start addressing that. Like I said, I wasn't going to do this type of stuff. I wasn't going to go after anyone. I wasn't going to make these type of comments. But this has opened up the door because, like I said, 
There is nothing more than I hate than a hypocrite. And you can go ahead and watch my video. I will show you proof that he's a hypocrite. He's got videos on his channel currently with him hanging out with scammers. Currently hanging out with scammers, known scammers, people who, who've been called out on YouTube and then blogs for being scammers. And these were his personal friends. That's that's another issue that I have with the dude. So you're going to see some more because I've had some people in the comments. This should be your only response. Let it go. No, 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 no. You don't understand. This has been, um, like I said, because like I see so much bad financial advice. And like I said, I don't watch his channel, so I really don't know what he's talking about. So I'm going to have to educate myself to figure out what he's talking about, the advice that he's putting out. So I got to watch his videos because I personally don't think the dude can teach me anything. A lot of clickbait a lot of stuff like that and once again you know YouTube is about personality and he has that personality that a lot of people like that boyish charm but at times he's full of it he's just full of it like his little ad hoc attacks on me was just full of it he was talking about what I was wearing not about the content I was talking about and I've got a series of videos planned. Like yesterday after I watched that video, I got pissed off. I just drew up a, a battle plan, so to speak. So there will be more and uh, probably one a week for the next four to 10 weeks. I already got a second one planned. And as I'm on this treadmill, another one just comes to mind. Because one of the things is there is this cash is trash movement and cash is not trash um, you need cash you know once you get to a certain level of cash that is saved up unless you're doing like Grant Cardone Grant Cardone is one of the biggest hypocrites in the world cash is trash Grant Cardone saved up a million dollars to get into his first big dog real estate deal Cash money. He saved it up. He did not invest it. He did not spend it. He saved it up. So I think Uncle G, the other Uncle G, is forgetting how he came up. And essentially, I'm doing the Grant Cardone. Right now, I'm saving up for an apartment complex because I got to put 25% down. So I'm going to need to put $2.5 million down. And once I put that $2.5 million down, I'm not going to be broke. Uh, one of the Carter rules is never to spend all your money. I don't risky. I don't do gamble things like that. Just depends upon where I'm at. And this is one of the reasons that I'm starting this new dealership to increase my cash flow. So it's going to be really, really interesting. But yeah, there's going to be a lot more personal finance content on Savage Finance. I'm about to go crazy with it. So just letting you guys know, it's about to get epic. It's about to be real because he's never had anyone like me on him. Never. It's going to be funny. It's going to be real, real funny.